everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Christy Van with Fantastic Finances, and on this channel, I teach Velocity Banking. So I'm working with a lady in Portland, and she has a lot of debt. Um, she has a large mortgage, and she has a bunch of smaller loans and credit cards. Um, she has recently become disabled, and she wants to see how quickly she can get rid of some of this debt so that she can breathe. So we're going to see what we can do to help her with that. Her income currently stands at $7,000 a month. Her expenses, though, are at $7,305, so that leaves her $305 in the negative. She does have $11,000 in savings, and she was just approved for a $150,000 HELOC. That is what we're going to use to knock off some of this debt. So we made a decision that the expenses should come out of the smaller HELOC that stands at a balance of $40,809. She can take her savings of $11,000, put in that HELOC, knock that down some, knock those interest charges down some until we get there to pay that HELOC off. And remember, when you make income transfers into any line of credit, it knocks out this $300 payment, therefore, that is $300 of cash flow that we definitely need in this scenario. So with the $150,000 HELOC, what we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're going to pay off the UP personal loan at $44,860, the Discover card loan at $29,031, and the Capital One car at $32,407. That makes the balance of the HELOC now $106,298. But that also gives us cash flow of $425, $584, and $1,200. So that's really going to put a dent in this HELOC. To begin the HELOC in month one, she'd put her income in. Her expenses would come back out. This is all the other payments due plus her living expenses. The balance would go back up to $104,094. And then her interest would be $775 approximately. I just averaged that out the best I could because the banks will have to figure that out. So hopefully it'll be lower than that, much lower. But that is figured at 9% interest. She will do this for four more months. Then when she is into month six, she is going to pay the city card off. It is at 53.50. We add that into the balance. We bring out her expenses for month six and put her income in for month six, bringing her balance down to 102,869. She will do her income in, expenses out, for five more months. This is bringing the balance down so that we can reach over here and grab something else to get rid of all of those payments, making them cash flow. So in five more months, her balance will be down to 94869 We will then add these three smaller ones, the 604 Barclay, the 590 City, and the USAA at 2227 that will free up a little bit more cash flow of $147, which always helps to knock down the balances. So the total of those three is $3,421, bringing her balance back up to $98,290. So in month 11, her expenses will come out, her interest will come out, and her income will go in, bringing her balance back down to $96,445. She will do her income in, expenses out for four more months, bringing the balance to $89,065. Then she's going to pay off the Wells Fargo at $7,741 in month 15. Her balance will go up to $96,806. Her expenses and her interest will go out, and then her income will come in in month 15, bringing her balance to $94,783. She will do this for three more months. Income in, expenses out. I know it seems crazy to show this out month by month like I do, but when I'm doing coaching, people want to know what month they're in and what their balances should look like in that month. So I try to be as tedious as I can so that if they are following the strategy, income goes in, expenses come out, you pay this bill on this day, then you kind of have an idea of what you need to do. It makes it a little bit easier, especially when you're dealing with so much debt such as this. Uh, we get so tied up in our debt that it's overwhelming and it's consuming. And so we have to have an outlet or someone that will help us with a strategy to lay it out month by month so we know what to do and when to do it. So I am doing this for her 
like I said, she's disabled. Uh, she has her illness to focus on and doesn't really want to soak around in this debt anymore, and I can't blame her for that. So after the three months of pain with the income in, the expenses out, her balance will be down to 88783 Then she's going to pay off the Discover card of 4779 bringing her balance back up to 93562 In month 18, her income is going to go in. Her expenses and interest will come out, bringing the balance back to 91382 She will do this for three more months. Income in, expenses out, bringing the balance to 84842 She'll then pay off NFCU at $64.15. We're going to be grabbing that $136 of cash flow. Her balance will be at $91,257, but she'll make an income deposit in month 22 of $7,000. Her expenses and interest will come back out, bringing her balance to $88,944. So that means that in less than six years, she has wiped out almost $200,000 in debt, and that does include what has been going towards her actual mortgage payments while she's been in this process. And she can now begin paying off that home, which should be sitting at about a $320,000 balance. And it too should be paid off in less than seven years. So she has got a lot of work to do here, but it's not stressful. It's laid out now. Income in, expenses out, pay those bills on the dates that they're supposed to be paid. Try to stay consistent. Hope that life doesn't happen too much to throw you off track. And just keep moving forward. If you keep digging, you have to come out somewhere. And you're going to be in better shape when you get there. I have enjoyed working with you, Miss Portland Lady. And email me updates. We will talk again soon. I appreciate all of you for watching the video. If you too need any kind of financial help, please contact me. I have links below. I schedule whiteboards just like this. I schedule telephone calls. I am available to serve you when you need it. So I appreciate you guys and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.